to the New Unity Baptist Church broadcast. We are the equipping ministry, empowering the people of God for the work of the kingdom. Our pastor is Reverend Johnny Napoleon Golden Sr. We are so blessed to have you join us in worship today. Thank you, and let's begin worship. Amen. Fulfilling the mandate, the unseen and the unheard, reveal to the people of God, great destination to unity beyond the veil. It is through our prophetic ministries of preaching, praying, praise, and pedagogy that we, the New Unity Baptist Church of Maryland, seek to do the work of the kingdom. Again, good morning to all of our brothers and sisters that gather together with us in worship this morning. Please join me in singing an old song of the church, Hold to His Hand. Amen. God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on the God's unchanging hand. Come on, John. Oh, you must hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, bring the hope something eternal. To God, unchanging hand. Amen, amen, amen. Again, welcome to all that are in worship with us this morning. Minister Catherine Giles will lead us to the throne of grace this morning. God bless you. Following the invocational prayer, we will be ministered in song by Brother Francis Dixon. God bless you all standing in the presence of the Lord, please. We are uncovering the sacred urn and lifting the book of Jubilee. God bless you. Good morning to all. As we go to the throne of prayer this morning, I ask you to pray along with me this morning. Holy, holy God, our Father is the Holy One, the creator of all the earth. We ask for forgiveness of our sin grace and mercy we seek. We come before you with open hearts and stretched out hands to worship you, praise you, and glorify you. We are forever in the need of your presence at this hour. As we lift up the sacred urn of prayer and the book of Jubilee of Thanksgiving, we ask that you would touch and breathe on them, yeah. for your touch is filled with holy love. Mm. And to breathe filled with holy power, we say thank you. Thank you. For this is our Advent season. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. His name should be called Wonderful Counselor. He is the hope that live within us. Your words have we learned from out of Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuously, endlessly in prayer. We thank you for giving us a servant leader, Pastor Reverend Golden, who will bring us the bread of life that comes from you. Bless all the leaders and the congregation of this sanctuary called New Unity Family. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit guide us into a holy worship 
and experience on this day. We give you thanks for the anointed one, Jesus Christ. This is my prayer. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Dixon. Bless you, Brother Dixon, for your ministry. Our litany and proclamation this morning is coming from a mother and daughter team. The litany and proclamation, Sister Angela Carter will be leading us. And then the word from the sacred canon, her daughter, Sister Jessica A. White. Amen. So we are ready. The mic is now yours, leaders. God bless you. Good morning. Our scripture, our litany and scripture of the year, fulfilling the mandate the unseen and the unheard reveal to the people of God great destination beyond the veil. Amen. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the 
the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For who have known the mind of God, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 9, 10, and 16. Yeah. What yeah. day is this? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And the Lord answered and said unto me, write the vision and make it plain that they may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it linger, wait for it, because it will surely come. For the just shall live by his faith, for the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And God made some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers all together for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the kingdom, for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God until the fullness of Christ, amen. Good morning, I'll be reading Mark 1 verses 1 through 3 and Matthew 1 verses 18 through 25. Mark 1 verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Yeah. Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Verse 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, lead us both. Good morning, Pastor Golden, Reverend Wanda Golden, New Unity family and friends who are here on our Zoom platform, as well as out there in Facebook. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are in our Advent season. This is the first Sunday um, in December, and we are in our season of hope today. Amen. Amen. So first, I would like to just let everyone know to please join us on Zoom One channel on this Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., which is December 8th, where we will have our discipleship training and Bible study. But before you join us at 7 p.m., please join us again at 12 o'clock p.m. on that same day when we have a rebroadcast. We, when we will have a rebroadcast of our um, Bible study. So at 12 noon, you get to hear, hear rebroadcast of our services and Bible study, followed by 7 p.m. Join us live or on the phone on Zoom channel one for discipleship training and Bible study with our pastor, Reverend Johnny and Golden Sr. And also I have a reminder um, that comes from our 
Deacon Marion High, who is the ministry leader for the U Matters Ministry, U Unity Matters Ministry, for all of our ministry leaders. If you plan to place any information in our commitment bags that we provide, she asks that you must have your information to her by December 8th. If you have any questions, please reach out to Deacon Marion High for more information. This is regarding the commitment bags. Also, we're still praying New Unity Church. So our Still Waters Prayer Ministry under the leadership of Minister Catherine Giles and um, Sister Peggy Butler, join us um, on Saturday morning for one hour of prayer on Zoom channel one. That's every Saturday morning at 7 a.m come together as a community so that we can still pray for one another. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we are in our Advent season. So this is under our leadership of um, our very own Dean, Deacon Denise Palin in the Christian Education Department. Um, momentarily, you will hear a presentation of hope for our Advent season. Um, today is gonna be hosted by our co-leader of the Young Adult Ministry, Sister Brittany Johnson. So stay tuned for more information and for this wonderful presentation in a moment. And also I have an announcement. There's been a change in our venue, New Unity family. So our very own Sarah's Daughters Ministry, we will be having our annual New Unity Baptist Church Christmas party. The date is still December 11th and the time is gonna be at one o'clock PM to four o'clock PM. But there's been a change in the location. So the location is gonna be at 51, 14 Liberty Heights Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21207. And the venue is called Eventful. And actually those of you who are familiar with the area, this location is down the street, or I should say up the street from the Forest Park Senior Center. So again, still same day, same time, just a different venue, Eventful, that is the name of the venue. If you have any questions, you may see either our First Lady Reverend Wanda Golden or Minister Zen Smith. Tickets are um, at $20, 18 and over. And if you're under 17, 10, um, $10. So again, $20, 18 and over, $10, 17 and under. As a reminder, dinner will be served at 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. only. Um, uh, tickets are asked to be received and purchased by Sunday, December 5th by three o'clock PM, so that is today. So again, please reach out to Minister Smith or Reverend Wanda Golder for any um, additional um, questions um, or information that you may need. And finally, we wanna do some shout out and wish for um, a happy birthday blessings to our December celebrants, all those who are celebrating their birthdays in the month of December. And again, please take time to visit our website, newunitybaptistchurch.org for more information. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and I will turn the platform over to Deacon Vanessa Thomas. Good morning, New Unity family and visiting friends. We're gonna prepare now to give our tithe and our offerings. As we are into our second Sunday of Advent, we still have hope in our hearts for the great things that God has done and is still doing in all of our lives. I hope and pray that you are being blessed by your faithful, consistent obedience unto God in your giving. God has indeed been faithful to all of us and we have a responsibility and an opportunity. Yes, God gives us all opportunities to give back to him. And we thank you for your generous financial support to this church. So let's prepare now to give. Our two ways in which you can give is our cash app, dollar sign, New Unity Baltimore, or you can mail in to P.O. Box 313, Chase Merlin, 21037, excuse me, 21027. And again, New Unity, we thank you. Now let us pray. Father God, this Advent season, we wait in hope and we give in hope. Hope for your coming reign. Hope because of your presence with us even now. Some may give large amounts of money. Some people like Mary and Joseph give smaller amounts, but sacrificially equal, if not more. We give you thanks for the offering of all amounts today and that's that you bless them equally 
and that they may do the work of your kingdom. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given to thee. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the color of today is green, so it's nice to see everyone with their green accessories and green shirts and green colors on today. Um, so let's begin today's um, Advent reading. Um, today is hope, so um, Advent is a season observed in many Christian churches as a time of expect, expect, oh, I'm sorry, y'all, hold on, hold on, baby. Let's start over, I'm sorry, my paper fell down. <laughs> um, good morning, Advent is the season observed in many Christian churches as a time of expectant waiting and preparing for both the celebration of the nativity of Jesus at Christmas and the return of Jesus at his second coming. Our Advent season here at New Unity will be filled with Christmas songs, scriptures, and the colors of this holy season on love, hope, joy, and peace. Today we observe hope, and our Advent reader, Advent reader today is Sister Jasmine Rodriguez. Sister Jasmine, the mic is yours. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jasmine Rodriguez. The Greek candle of hope is called the prophet's candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited in the hope for the Messiah's arrival. People in the Old Testament knew that God had promised to send a savior. And we are filled with hope because we knew that Jesus came to earth on the first Christmas so he could tell people about God and, and die for our sins. In Rome 15, 13, it says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confidence, hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for the hope that is in Christ to come into our lives in a new way. May we become hope that is alive in our in our world. Quiero decir a por la espacha que hay en Cristo del ven a nosotros vidas de un mande nueva. Que nos convienza en espacio ven en nosotros muero. Amén. Now, wait, 
Let me step in, Brother Dixon. Brother Dixon, let me step in. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this holy morning. Jesus, to thee be glory given. God and the Father, now in flesh appearing. Word of the Father. Oh, come, let us adore him. Everybody standing. Come on, feel your diaphragm. As Brother Dixon leads us, we're all singing together. It's on your monitor. If you can see, if you happen to have a hymn book at home, open it and sing it with us. Oh, oh come, third and final stanza. Amen, amen, and amen. Somebody say good morning to the Lord this morning. Happy birthday, Jesus, as we celebrate, as we're coming pre-birthday, as it were. Amen to the Lord as we come and worship. Are you glad to be in worship today? How many are you glad to be in worship? How many can honestly say, I'm glad to be in the service, glad to be in the service, glad to be in the service one more time. Thank you so very much, Sister uh, Brittany. Uh, Johnson, our leader for this morning, and thank you, Sister Jasmine Rodriguez. She gave us that prayer, didn't she, in both Spanish and uh, uh, English, rather, and uh, Anglais and Spanish, and we're so Espanol, and so we're so grateful for you. Thank you for reading and uh, sharing with us, Sister Jasmine Rodriguez, the granddaughter of Deacon Vanessa Thomas. Thank you also, Brother uh, Dixon, once again, leading us in song, and all of you who sharing in this worship service this morning to you. Amen, Sister Andrea, First Lady Reverend Wanda Golden, amen, all of our celebrants, every person, Minister Catherine Giles, and Sister Angela Carter, Sister, uh, Sister, uh, yes, yeah, Sister Jessica White, and all of us together, amen. One of the challenges we have here in our worship experience, you know, when you're in a Zoom environment, you're almost like in a silo. You know, the silo is those big uh, vats out in the Midwest. We have grain and oils and various things in storage, and they sit there. And even silos we have underground where we store missiles and things um, as as such. And uh, they 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 they're isolated, right? They they insulated, isolated, separated from us. And some to some degree, that's what Zoom does. But worship is designed to be a corporate experience, right? Corporate means the body. That's what a corporation is, the body, right? Now, all of the various entities coming together, making this one corporeal, this one body. And Paul writes in the book of uh, Romans that we are the body of Christ. We are the baptized. First Corinthians twelve. We are the baptized, called our body body of believers, amen, this body. And so we, we want to always push ourselves in this Zoom environment because we've been in it now for some, for some time now. And uh, it becomes easy to slip into, you know, a sort of a blase mode of worship and just uh, the energy sort of drains and just uh, uh, the uniqueness of it uh, uh, disappears. But we are every now and then we just want to refocus ourselves. Amen. Just somebody said with, int with intentionality. Amen. With intentionality, we, we want to shake ourselves. Remember when Samson uh, was... Uh, was uh, captured by the Philistines and they said, Samson, the Philistines upon you. And he said, the Bible said he arose and he shook himself. But when he shook himself, wasn't nothing there. Amen. And we want to, we don't want to shake ourselves. Amen. And the power be gone, right? We don't want to shake ourselves and did not know. And the, and the King James says, and he wished, W-I-S-T, and he did not know. He wished not that the spirit had departed from him. And we don't want to wish, W-I-S-T, not know that the spirit has departed, but we want to be sure that the spirit is yet with us. Somebody say, amen. 
amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, don't just nod your head. Say amen. Come on, open your mouth and say amen. That's right. Even if you got candy in it, say amen. You know I'm talking about you. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hey, man, we bless the Lord uh, this morning. There's that great 19th uh, chapter of, of Revelation. You all know it. Say it with me. Hey, man, you, you know it. Uh, you know how, how in worship, when you're in a physical environment, right, you can build a crescendo, the organ can start playing, and the drummer on the percussions can start beating his drum. And you know how uh, Mr. Jerry Lewis, when he used to have those telephones at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, and uh, they would get to a certain amount, uh, dollar amount and, and their goal. And he was a timpani, T-I-M-P-A-N-I, timpani. And they would start playing on the drum, and then boom, and you get that amount. They would, they would, and it's, it was all a crescendo. And if you've been to a stadium or watched television and there was a ball game going on and it may start out way down the end of the field, you saw this wave. One section would stand and sit down, then the next section would stand up and sit down, then the next, it was a wave. It was a crescendo with building and then all of them would come together and clap and root, root for the home team, as it were. And that's what I want us to do this morning. Let's build a crescendo here this morning, amen. As we join that great host in heaven, we are, we are, we are, we are compassed, we are surrounded, Hebrews 11 and 2. 12 rather we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses somebody say it with me revelations 19 hallelujah come on say it with me come on hallelujah, hallelujah. salvation and glory, salvation and glory. Honor, and power. honor and power to the to the king of kings king king. come on for the lord our god is mighty the god for is the mighty. lord our god is mighty god say it come on for the lord our god is mighty for the lord our god is omnipotent the Lord our God, He is wonderful. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory, honor and power. Lord our God, for the Lord, for the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Amen. Somebody write that word down. W I S T. Say, I don't want to wish. Amen. That is that. That means He did not know. When Samson arose, he wished not that the spirit had departed from him. He did not know. And he thought he could defeat the Philistines that he had what? Done in times past. But he did not know that the spirit had departed from him. Amen. And everything was copacetic, so, so he thought. And I don't want the unity to wake up on one Sunday morning. Amen. Some glad morning or some sad morning. Amen. And wish not. Amen. Not W-I-S-K, that stuff that you put on your collars when you're washing your, your, your shirts. Amen. Not W-I-S-K, the clean but W-S-T, he did not know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. And I'm so glad this morning that we yet have the Spirit of God yeah. with us here on this second Sunday, the Sunday of hope. It's the color of green. You got your green on this morning. We're all celebrating. Amen. We're happy. We're, we're excited. Somebody say amen. And if you, you know how I know you can, when you say amen, you know how I know you're happy? When you're happy and you know it, you say amen. Y'all don't forget the song. When you're happy and you know it, come on, that's it. When you're happy and you know it, you say amen. Absolutely. Amen. When you're happy and you know it, amen. Clap your hands. Amen. Turn around, stomp your feet, sit down. Amen. Y'all remember that part. Y'all got the last part together. Sit down part. <laughs> now let's get that clap your hand part. Amen. Let's, <laughs> let's get the turn around part. Amen. Because we in worship. Amen. And we are celebrating the goodness of our Lord. And what an awesome God he is, isn't he? Yeah. What an awesome God he is. And we're going to celebrate this uh, this week, uh, thank you, Deacon Jackson, Sister Sandy Jackson. On Wednesday, we'll have our 12 noon rebroadcast, Our Power. Then we'll come back for our second installment of our uh, first fruits lesson on this Wednesday at seven o'clock. But then on Saturday, we'll get now from what I've been told, the report that I've seen, church, we may be out of tickets. I don't know that that's 100% close or true, but we may be that if you haven't got your ticket already, they may be all sold out. You can check with Minister Zen Smith 
to be sure. So if anybody had any ticket, if you're holding on the ticket and you haven't sold them, please let Sister Smith know, Minister Smith know, so she'll know how to do it. Don't, don't sell a ticket to somebody, then they can't get in. But we have a limited uh, amount of persons going to be able to get in. We don't want anyone coming, can't get in. No ticket sold at the door, so you have to have purchased it already. Amen. Don't bring your cousin to the door and say, can she come? We don't want to be that boogeyman and tell him no. So don't, don't put us in that position. Amen. Don't bring your, your baby and say, can my little girl come in? What can we say? We can't deny a child, can we? But don't put us in that position. Amen. But both of y'all have to, uh, you remember the rich young ruler when he ran up to Jesus and he said, good pastor, Pastor Golden. And Jesus, and, and after he told him the truth, the Bible says he did what? He went away sorrowful. We don't want anybody leaving Saturday, Saturday sorrowful. We want everybody to be happy, wear your festive colors, put on your patent leather shoes, put on your can-can slip, put on, get your hair all down, <laughs> roll up. Come on, we're going to have a good time. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I just don't know yet. I think I'm going to find me a, a, a tie that lights up, you know, an ugly sweat on the front and, a, and a, a whatever sweat on the side. Hey, man, I'm going to have uh, maybe, uh, what do you call them, uh, uh, pants that got all kinds of jacket colored pants, hey, man, with all kinds of designs going going one way. I'm going to open my jacket and uh, it's going to light up and say peace. The other right. side going to light up and say, uh, somebody help me. Uh, Lord, I don't know. But we're going to have a great time. We got games. We've got food. We've got prizes. We got, we got one another. Got a mask. You got an M-A-S-K. You got a mask. All right, we're going to mask, we're going to social distance, but we got music and games and celebration and fun. It's going to be a great time in this Advent Christmas season. Be there with, with us this Saturday. Call Minister Smith. If you haven't purchased your ticket, please let her know. If you're holding on two or three, let her know because we believe by the record we receive, we're already 100% capacity. So everybody, uh, but we want to see everybody. We, but don't, don't come and, and have him pay. Please don't put us in that position of having to turn you or your family away. It wouldn't be fair to us. and It wouldn't be fair to them. Amen. It wouldn't be fair to us. And it would not be fair to them. So let us know. Amen. Thank you, Brother Williams. Thank you, Sister Sarah Williams, for, for already um, providing transportation to pick up seven persons at the at the uh, 124 building. What a come on, let's give them a great hand. Thank you, Brother William. Thank you, Sister Sarah. Amen. They'll be there picking up the person along with our coordinator, Sister Thelma Henderson. Thank you, Sister Thelma. They'll coordinate that and pick up those persons. And we're grateful, Brother William. We're grateful, grateful, Sister Thelma, for what you're doing at the 124 building and that and that great uh, endeavor. Thank you also. Very, very, very much. The Lord is blessing us in a yeah. great way, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, the Lord is blessing us. Minister Giles, you never prayed better. What a great prayer this morning. Thank you so very much. Amen. It was beautiful. That was one you could put, a, you could make a record out of. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. You've got a beautiful tree as I see it behind you looking gorgeous. All of you, many of you got very, I see your tree, Sister Vanessa and others, others and Sister Hoover, I see your wreath there up the hallway on the staircase and others and Deacon um, Palin, I see you, you always got a, a, a timely topical background and others of you, thank you so very, very much, amen, just good, amen, to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, isn't it? Somebody say amen. amen. For the Lord our God is mighty, yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent, omni, omni, omni means all. All potent, that's what it is, um, potent means power. Our God has all power. We just put a fancy way of saying omnipotent, but it's omnipotent, omnipotent, all power, amen. Now, the Omicron uh, variant is not omnicron, like the omnipotent, O-M-N-I, is O-M-I, no N, right? Omicron, that virus, and I trust and pray that you're getting your shots and doing the things that are necessary to stay healthy. But where was I? For the Lord our God is mighty, yes. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Somebody say it with me. Amen, amen, and amen again. Brother Dixon's going to come and share and bless the Lord and worship with us. We're so glad to see everyone. Anybody got any special guests with us then this morning during this Advent season? We acknowledge any special guests. You just make yourself known, Deacon Kearney, Deacon Hoover. One of them will 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 will, will spotlight you or give a, 
Uh, shout out to you, Deacon Kearney. I believe Deacon Kearney is man in our cameras this morning, but who, whichever, amen. If you have somebody, just wave your hand and make it known and we'll, we'll highlight your name or whatever the case may be. Just wave your hand or say hello, or whatever the case. Deacon Kearney, Deacon Hoover. Pastor Golden, we do want to acknowledge today that our dear sister, Erica Harris, Erica is at work today. She works at one of the local uh, nursing facilities. Yes. And she's the activities person there, Pastor Golden. So you know what she did for activity today? She has all the residents there tuned in to the New Unity Baptist Church worship. Bless our God. God bless well, you, Erica. To, we, We're going to do that, Brother Dixon. I know you already have a song, people. But we're going to sing another Christmas song that all the residents, a Christmas song, something that everybody knows, so we can all sing that together. It'll live in their spirits. Brother Dixon, amen. Whatever you pick, give you a moment to do that while we go around the horn, as it were, and see if there's anyone else with a... Uh, all right, I see Sister Dixon is saying Sister Arlene is there at the 124 building. Amen, amen. And anyone else? I see Brother Charles Lewis there. You see him, Brother Kearney? Amen, Sister Hoover. Amen. I see him wave, wave, wave back. Give us a wave there, Brother Charles. Amen. There he is. There he looks like he might be at work today also. And he's also tuning in. Ain't nobody working in America no more. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. Everybody, but everybody getting the check. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. Anybody else got a friend or a member or, or anyone with them today? Special guest? Everybody's special now. All right. Anybody on the phone that we uh, need to acknowledge? Brother Derek, all right, Brother Derek, anybody else? Amen. God be praised. But we're just delighted to have every one of you here with us doing yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also want to say some. Um, I took my exams last week. And, um, yes, I sir. Taking two exams this week in time. Pray that, pray that I pass my exams. Amen. Amen. Brother Derek DeVinez is out there at Morgan State University, majoring in computer sciences in the IT information technology area, and uh, took two exams. Yeah, this is that time of the year, in December. I, how I know, Brother Derek, end of the year in December, we all come down to those uh, those finals, as it were. So we are praying for you and others in these final uh, few weeks of this uh, this particular quarter, this particular semester. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. All right, what a bless. All right, Brother Dixon, can you give us a Christmas song that we can sing? And uh, and all of those special guests with Sister Erica. Oh man, isn't this a blessing? Sister Erica, you let you 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 send a text to Sister Mill if you don't mind when you can. Count them up and let us know you how many how many sweet souls you got out there uh sitting in the, I assume in the uh, recreation room or the what you call them, whatever, multi-purpose room or whatever it is, count them all up and just send us a mail of text, amen, and let her know so we can just salute them all together and your wonderful, um, okay, uh, it's, um, it's nine, nine, yeah, wonderful. It's isn't nine. That a nine, well, isn't that a blessing, yeah. that yeah. is, <laughs> thank you so very much, Sister Erica, yeah, and, you, and, and you are the activities co coordinator out there, um, I'm a, one of the activities assistants here, yeah, isn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. Well, we we thank you so very much. Yeah. What greater joy could there be than be in church on, on a Sunday morning, on the second Sunday in the Advent season, where we're all decked out and excited, singing the songs of Christmas, amen, welcoming the Messiah, this Christ child, th this anointed one, and you thought it not robbery, amen, to gather as many persons that were willing to come down and share with us. Yeah this morning what a blessing we thank you it is beautiful it is magnificently beautiful amen amen brother charles lewis will 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 could could, could attest to this whenever he and i would visit uh nursing homes and facilities we always remind each other uh brother charles know that i'd always say to brother charles, brother charles nobody was born in here and one day they were young, just like you and I, walking and running. And so, and so life gets a hold of all of us. I mean, so we have to speak to everybody. Amen. Everybody, yeah. we walking down these hallways, whether they see us, because some of them have vision impairment and other um, infirmities. And, but you'd have to say good morning to everybody we encountered as we were walking down to a particular room to pray and to visit with somebody. So we say again to you, Sister Erica, thank you so very, very, very much. Amen. All right, Brother Dixon, you ready?
Yes, you want a Christmas song? Yeah, give me a Christmas song. Joy to the world, anything, you know. Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Oh, the wonderful child. Everybody join in. Jesus. Jesus. Listen. Jesus. Oh yeah. sing another song now brother dixon gonna wear your throat out today that's right hallelujah amen all right
Amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Brother Dixon. Amen. Thank you so very, very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How we do bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Can I tell you that you are a beautiful congregation? Oh, my, you're looking so beautiful. Every one of you, even you on the phone that I can't see through the eyes of faith. Amen. You are beautiful. Every one of you. Amen. In your greenhouse coats. <laughs> you're <laughs> yeah, you're looking good. Amen. You're looking good. As they say, hey, hey, every one of every one of them, Sister Angela, Sister Angela, you were sparkling this morning. Amen, brother uh, Cornelius. I see you there, looking beautiful. Every one of you, thank the Lord for every heart, every soul. Amen. Listen to this verse here. I want to read one verse that will guide us uh, this year, but in some sense, church, it will guide us every year. Amen. It will guide us this year of 2021, but in some sense, it will guide us every year. It's out of the book of Matthew. It's not my preaching text, but it's my theme. It's the theme for the church during this Advent season. Yeah, we still have fulfilling the mandate, the unseen and the unheard. Amen. Revealed to the people of God, great destination beyond the veil. But we have a sub theme under that for this Advent season. And here it is. And he sent them, chapter 2 of Matthew's gospel, verse 8, Matthew 2 and 8. Matthew chapter 2, verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Somebody write it down. Amen. All roads lead to Bethlehem. I'm ready to write it down. All roads. That's our theme. Amen. That's our theme. All roads lead to the, that's not my preaching message for today, but it's a sub theme. Next Sunday, it'll be the same thing. The next Sunday and the next Sunday, that'll be our theme. All roads lead to Bethlehem. And he sent them, verse eight of chapter two of Matthew's gospel, where to Bethlehem and said, go that's the house of bread, by the way. That's what that word means. Go and search diligently for the young child, being Jesus. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Somebody say it with me. All roads lead to Bethlehem. In the midst, uh, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of all that we're doing, in the midst of all of the ups and downs and upheavals of life is easy. You can write it down or put it in your memory bank. It's easily to get distracted, isn't it? And to forget in this season in particular, amen, your gift that you bought sitting out there in the Bay in San Francisco, and you're worried that, that, that Amazon may not get your choo-choo train to your little one on time. But I want to remind you this morning, all roads lead to Bethlehem, amen, not to California. 40% of all of our goods from China and from Asia come through California to two ports. And that's something, 40%, that means it is tons and tons and tons. I mean, they have... They have, uh, you've seen the pictures, they've got ships out in the ocean that won't get, get, in, get, in, get into the bay until, uh, until January. They've got trucks and containers. I mean, I don't mean little trucks. I mean huge trucks, huge containers sitting out there. Can't get them in. Can't get them in. Very concerned about that uh, for goods and all the rest of that. But all of that be be uh, be whatever it may be. Amen. We want to say it again. Come on, say it with me. All roads lead to Bethlehem. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of everything that's going on, we are still, and I want you to notice something, church, that whatever the preaching text preachers and everybody else, whether it's Pastor Golden or one of our other uh, clergy or guest preacher, we will always, always, always during the Christmas season, during the Advent season, we will always tell the story of the Christ child. Now you have your preach if you want to preach out of Genesis, amen, or preach out of Psalm, but we will always read Matthew and Luke talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. We want to put that story where in the hearts of our children, yeah. their mothers, their fathers, their yeah. sisters, their brothers, their little cousins, amen, and anybody else under our voice, amen. So every year, church, get in your mind. We want to be sure if Pastor Golden preach out of Galatians, amen, they say, well, but that may have been what? 
his preaching text, but the corporate reading will always come out of Matthew or Luke. Maybe, maybe a little out of Mark and John, not as much, but we always want to put that story of the Christ child and what happened to John the Baptist, what happened to Mother Elizabeth, what happened to his father, Zechariah, talk about them angels, angels we have heard on our, tell them about the angels, amen, talk about those shepherds in the field, abiding, keeping watch over their flock by night, amen, we want to tell that narrative, what, every year, Otherwise, we're going to do what? W-I-S-T, the spirit, we're going to wish not that the spirit had departed. And you're going to say, why don't our children know the story about Christmas? Why don't they know something about this Christ child? You ask them about Mary and Joseph, and they look at you like you, and you ask them something about the shepherds, they don't know. And they don't know anything about Bethlehem. And they don't, we want to be sure every year, somebody write it down. Every year, Pastor Golden, whatever you're preaching about, that'll be okay. But the reading portion will always be Matthew and Luke. Somebody, the corporate reading. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. But we want to be sure, amen, that we, we put this word of God into the hearts of people. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit. There we are. Uh, amen. We want to be sure that we put, place this word of God into the hearts of our community, particularly our children, but indeed all of us. Otherwise, we wish not that the spirit had departed from us. We're talking about hope this morning, aren't we? H-O-P-E. Somebody say amen. amen. Talking about hope. Amen. And hope makes us not ashamed. Uh, Romans 15. I think Sister uh, Jessica may have quoted this this morning. I say, well, then that lets me know we're on, a, we're on the right uh, road, Sister Jessica, because you read my preaching text, I believe, in your statement about hope. Amen. Romans 15, verse 4, and then verse 13. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, and that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Then verse 13 of Romans 15, Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that she may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you this day. We ask your grace upon us as we share this word with this wonderful congregation. Thank you again for Sister Erica Harris and the nine souls that are with her, as well as all of our friends and guests, wherever they may be gathered, including on the Facebook. We thank you even now in Christ Jesus' name. And together we say Amen. I want to. I want to. I want. Uh, I want to present a case this morning. I want to. I want to go to court this morning to some degree, brother Williams. I want. I want to put present the case. Uh, uh, the case for hope. Uh, the case of hope that the glue that holds faith and love together. Uh, the case for hope. I want to. I want. I want to go. I feel like arguing. Uh, arguing in a in a legal sense. Uh, the case for hope. The case for hope. I. I could have. I could have, sister. Uh, pale, and I could have entitled this Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank and the Shawshank Redemption. Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. But I want to, I want to, I want to put this out this morning. Paul writes in 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 his in his letter to the church in that First Corinthians thirteen, one of the most glorious letters, epistles of all the gospel message, is it not? Uh, it talks about love. Love, love, love. It is this, not the uh, phileo love, this brotherly love, not this corporate love, uh, not, not, not even an erotic love between uh, romantics, uh, but he talks about a love, the agape love, A-G-A-P-E, the agape love, this love that comes from God. And then he ends that wonderful letter. He ends that wonderful missive, Minister Smith, with these words. And now about is what? Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. And so we elevate love to her rightful place. But I want to submit to you this morning, although that love might be supreme and, and faith might be sublime, that, that hope is surreal, that love may be the supreme ethic of the Christian life. And, and faith is that thing that without it, we cannot see God. But there is a place for hope. And I want to present the case this morning, uh, the case of hope. Uh, it is the glue that holds faith uh, and love together. Uh, my, my argument 
sentiment this morning to, the, to you this morning uh, is that love of all of her great dynamism uh, and with all of her great power and all of her great strength uh, and faith, uh, the thing that moves the heart of God, that it is hope in the middle of them. Now by the faith, hope then love those three uh, it is faith it is hope in the midst of them brother charles lewis uh, that holds them together in uh, 1994 there was a book written by mr stephen king and many of us who read books or movies or television are quite familiar with Mr. Stephen King. Uh, he's often uh, considered to be one of the great horror uh, writers, a horror story writers. And many of us have seen his movies or read his book. And, but in 94, he did a book uh, did a, and a movie adaptation uh, that many of us seen and consider one of the great movies dealing with hope uh, was uh, the Shawshank Redemption. How many of y'all remember that? Shawshank Redemption. And you seen uh, Mr. Timothy Bottoms and the other gentleman, I can't call his name right now, the African-American uh, actor who plays Red in the movie and others who are in there, uh, in that movie. But if you go to the bookstore, Brother Philip Randolph, uh, and look on the bookshelf, you will notice that the book is not called The Shawshank Redemption. The book is called Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption. Wow. If you read Morgan Freeman, that's I knew you were typing, Brother Randolph. I can see your hands moving. Thank you. Uh, Morgan Freeman, yes. Uh, it is called, if you look at the book, uh, if you have the book at home and you go upstairs to go to the bedroom and, and retrieve it, you will notice is that the movie uh, adaptation called it The Shawshank Redemption, but the book was called Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption. That's the book uh, title. Now, why did he use it? It's about this man, Timothy Bottom, plays his role of a man who's uh, in prison uh, for 25 years, falsely in prison. Somebody helped me this morning to recall the story. And there he has this little stone, uh, no bigger than a fork, a little object, and he's trying to turn his way out of prison, trying to dig a, a tunnel with a little stone, a little object, trying to dig this tunnel that he can get out because he has 25 years in prison, falsely accused. There he is in there, and he wants to know, how can I get out? He's made certain appeals, but they are denied, certain requests that are not honored. And so he decides, I'm going to chisel my way out here with this little stone. Now, how does he dig this tunnel there, Minister Cover? How does he dig this Connell there, John Kearney. How does he do it? Sister Jasmine, thank you for reading this morning. Uh, he uh, digs this corner, this chisel, uh, this hole, as it were, and week after week, day after day, month after month, year after year, he hides it by putting a poster of Rita Hayworth over it. Uh, now, if you know anything, uh, you've got to be a little bit of years on you now to remember who Rita Hayworth is. Rita Her Her uh, Hayworth is one of the great starlets of the 1940s and 1950s. Uh, and she does a movie that I uh, that I um, call Gilda. And I love that movie. In particular, she does a song for Put the blame on Maine, boys. Put the blame on Maine. Well, you got to sort of love musicals and uh, love that kind of old theater to appreciate that song. And, and so I watched it several times this week as she was going through that dance up. Uh, uh, with Glenn, Flo uh, Glenn uh, Ford as her boyfriend. And Brother Randolph, uh, you must be uh, at least 25 years old. Uh, you're shaking your head quite often this morning. And so it is, uh, uh, Rita Hayworth, uh, uh, she, she, he put her picture, uh, the man in the, in, in, the, in the prison who's been falsely accused, he has this poster of the Hollywood starlet, Rita Hayworth, and he digs a hole and he digs every day and every opportunity and he hides it by putting uh, the picture of Rita Hayworth uh, over the hole. Now, what she symbolizes, oh, come on, church, what she symbolizes is not just the, the beauty, the physical beauty of, uh, of a woman for a man who is locked up, but what she symbolizes is the hope of yeah. beauty. Somebody write it down. She does not just symbolize 
physical beauty. She does not just symbolize that which is attractive to the male eye or whatever the case may be, but what she symbolizes, new unity, is the hope of beauty or the beauty of hope. That hope is a beautiful thing. Rita Hayworth is not just up there as some pent up for him. That's it, Brother Kearney. But she symbolizes for him the hope of beauty or, or the beauty of hope. Somebody say amen this morning. Uh, uh, he talks, uh, uh, Andy is his name. He, he talks with Mormon, Morgan Freeman, Red, and they have dialogue and conversation while they're out there in the yard. All of these conversations are, are designed that even though they got years to spend in jail, even though it seems like they will never get out, somehow they have to encourage one another. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Somehow, even though the situation looks dark and bleak and it does not appear to the natural eye that we will ever get out of this situation, they got to keep hope alive. They must disguise. Uh -huh. Look at this. They got to disguise hope by putting a poster over it, over the very thing that will give them a uh, rescue, yeah. that will give them an opportunity to get away. And every now and then, you may have to disguise what's going on in your life. Come on here. Sometimes the tears, may, uh, the situations may break your heart, but don't turn around and tell somebody, but I won't let it break my spirit. Sure. It yeah, might sure. break my yeah. heart. It may cause, come on, wake up, church. Sure. It may cause some tears to yes, flow. Yes. It may cause some difficulty, but I will not allow it to break my spirit. I'll get up in the morning. I'll wash my face. I'll find my Vaseline or whatever I use to moisturize my skin. I'll exfoliate. Come on here. I'll get all of yesterday to sleep out of my eye. I'll get the sluggishness out of my spirit and I will go. Come on then. And I shall go to see what the end going to be. They use this poster to disguise mm -hmm, the dream of one day going to be free. Somebody say one day going to be free. They have to do this. Otherwise, church, if there is no hope for them, they recognize, Sister Erica, that they will lapse into depression and pity. Where there is no hope, New Unity. Anybody walking with me this morning? Yeah, there a community that has no hope, a community of people that have no aspiration uh -huh, for a better tomorrow will lapse into depression and pity. Look around Baltimore. Look around the nation cities of America. Look around the world where there is a lack or an absence of hope uh, people become depressed uh, come on somebody people start feeling pity uh, for themselves uh, rather than taking responsibility for what's going on in their lives we start finger pointing what do we do i didn't say what do they do i say what do we do because all of us are susceptible uh, to losing out there if we're not careful uh, we'll start pointing the finger at other things uh, and other people People and other circumstances, and so they must uh, mm, keep hope alive. And it tells his friend Red, he says, Now remember, Red, listen to this, church. He says, Remember, Red, hope is a good thing, maybe the best uh, of things, and no good thing ever dies. Can I say that again? Somebody may want to hear this. He says, Now, as they're talking out in the courtyard as they're going through, even though they got 25 years to, to, to serve and looks like they may wind up dying in prison if they ever get out at all. And it tells Red, he said, now Red, remember this, uh, hope is a good thing. Somebody write it down, hope is a, a good thing. Uh, and he said, maybe it is the best of things. And then he ends it by saying, and no good thing, ever dies. I turn around and say that I'm going to a place where I shall never die. I have a hope of a better life. And not only when I get to the other side, but even right now, I have a hope, hallelujah, that Jesus, hallelujah, will make my days better and brighter and sweeter. Mm -hmm. uh, than they appear to be, if I can just keep hope alive 
in my spirit. The second thing that I would point out to you from Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is, uh, it says you're never a prisoner if you keep hoping for the future. Can I say that? Although you're locked up in jail, and I'm not talking to you all in a physical jail. I'm talking about a mental jail, yeah. an emotional jail, yeah. a spiritual jail, a financial jail, whatever jail you feel like you're locked up in and cannot get out. Listen to me, church. You're never a prisoner if you keep hoping for the future. Hope, my brothers and sisters, will become your in a sanctuary and everybody needs a sanctuary somebody say amen everybody needs a place where they can escape and get away and have a little conversation with themselves and with god am i right about it somebody said even though i'm locked up in solitary confinement even though my steps are getting slower even though i'm living all alone it seems like i've been confined to my apartment to my room and cannot get out as often as I want to, uh, as long as I keep hope alive. Mm, here it is, Andy says to Red, he says, now, Andy, when I find myself in solitary confinement, I take Mozart, the great uh, music man, uh, with me. I take Mozart, I play his music in my mind. I Play it in my spirit that even though when I'm down in the hole, that's the beauty of music, he said. They can't take it away from you. Brother Dixon, I want you to know what you do on Sunday morning. When you play that uh, organ, when you play that keyboard, play it like heaven is right there. Because the music that you're playing, somebody needs to know yeah. that hope is alive. Somebody needs to hear Jesus, lover of my soul. Somebody needs to hear joy to the world. The Lord not was come, not going to come, but is come because he's a very present help. Come on, somebody. Yeah. In the time of trouble, every time you sit down, Brother Dixon, at that keyboard, a headache may be on you some day. The fingers might be aching on another day. Your back may not feel as strong as it did on the day before, but know my brothers and sisters that you are you are ministering the word of God. And he read, said to Andy, he said, that's the beauty of music. Y'all got a song? Tell somebody, I got a song. Come on, open your mouth and help me out. Tell somebody, I got a song. Man, the song was reminded us in the 1960s, that young girl out of Washington, D.C., didn't she? She says, God gave me a song. I got a song that the angel cannot sing. I've been washing the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed. The Lord has been so good to me. He's opened doors I could not see. Sometimes when I am feeling low, nowhere to go, nowhere to go. My father is rich in houses and land. He holds the power of the world in his hand. God gave me a song. Somebody say, I got a song this morning. I got a song when I'm feeling low. I, I got something to make me remember. Ah, my brothers and sisters, that God is good. I got something to give me a determination that I can escape my present condition. Brothers and sisters, can I move on here quickly and help us to understand brothers and sisters uh, Red and, 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 uh, and they're having these conversations and the next thing he says to him Sister Tam he apparently uh -huh, must have read uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He must have read Dunbar's poem, Sympathy. Now, most people think the poem is called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, but the real title of the song is called Sympathy. And so he says to him while they're outside talking one day, he says, some birds are not meant to be caged. Some birds are not meant to be caged. No doubt he had read uh, Sympathy. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And of course, Miss uh, uh, my Angelo took that line and made and did her auto 
biography and tells us about growing up down in Stamps, Arkansas and going out to Chicago and all the difficulties she had. But my God, at the end of her life, yeah. God had elevated her to an international yeah. place of stardom. Don't you uh, get too fraught for fraught with fear today and allow the enemy to darken your mind, but tell the devil highly I'm going to rise from where I am. God's going to bless me and not going to bless me. He's already blessed me. Yeah. Somebody say it, amen. Somebody say the Lord is already, come on. The Lord is already blessed me. Mm. The last thing here, he said, I hope I can make it across the border. That's the last line in the movie of the Shawshank Redemption. They finally get out. Mm. Let me just pause here. Let that sink in for a minute. Ah, oh, somebody, come on, come on. Come on, no matter how long it takes, uh, just say it to yourself. Uh, write it down. They finally got out. Now, put, take the day out and put, I, I finally yeah. got out. I finally got out of debt. Come on, somebody. I know you got some kind of bill. You got a whole stack of uh, envelopes in the corner. You haven't opened up since August. Uh, but I want to tell you, come on, I know I'm right about it. You're scared to open them up. Uh, you got all kind of cutoff notices. Uh, you got all kinds of threats. You got to go to court. You got the phone ringing. You don't change them. Every time you change the phone, they still find you. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ain't help me. I said, every time you change your number, <laughs> they still <laughs> find you. So quit running. Come on, now. write it down. Quit running. Quit running. Turn around and face yeah. your fears. Uh, face your challenges yeah. because they will yeah. find you. And he said now when they finally break out, he says now as he's looking at the Pacific Ocean and, and so, hoping somehow he can get out of there and get uh, to Canada. Get to, he said, I hope I can make it across the border. I hope to see my friend and shake his hand. I hope the Pacific as is blue. Listen to this. He says, I hope the Pacific Pacific, meaning the ocean, is as blue as it has been in my dreams. I hope. I hope uh, that whatever you've been dreaming of, uh, that your tomorrow is sweet. Come on, somebody. Help me preach this thing. Uh, come on. I'm just wrapping up. Uh, oh, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that, that we have a bright hope uh, and it's found in Christ Jesus. I got to close here, but write this down one more time, church. Hope uh, does not live in a vacuum. Hope is not Mm, a solitary, but hope, get this now, is according to Professor uh, Chanel Hellman, he says, hope is a social gift. Our connectedness with each other yeah. is one of the single best predictors of hope. Let me say that again. Professor Hellman says, hope is a social gift. He said, our connectedness uh, with each other yeah. is one of the yeah. single best predictors yeah. of hope. In other words, uh, you can't be a loner and have hope. You got to connect yeah. with people. Come on here. Yeah. Hope, my brothers and sisters, yeah. is a social gift. Hope does not, listen to this, hope does not, capital N, capital O, capital T in my notes, hope does not happen in isolation, but it happens in relationship with each other, realizing something bigger, something greater than ourselves. I got to close here this morning when uh, all of Israel uh, was looking for their Messiah, looking for their Christ child, looking for their deliverer. It seemed as though hope was, was gone. It seemed like they would forever be under the thumb, not only of the Roman Empire, but under the thumb of sin and degradation. But on one faithful night, God mm, sent a song. On one faithful night, God sent his son, born of a virgin, mm, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. Come on, somebody. Laid him in a creche. You know what a creche is? C-R-E-C-H-A. Sometimes they say creche. Laid him in a cradle. Laid him in a crib.
live. All that is fancy language. The fact of the matter is it was a trough. It was where the, where the horses and the animals go to feed. She laid him in a manger. She wrapped him. Whatever God gives you, be sure to wrap it. Come on, somebody. Wrap him in swaddling clothes. Baby's knee. Come on, somebody. I want to help somebody as I close here. Babies, newborn babies need to feel the mm, close. Babies cry when uh, they're laying in the crib oftentimes. And oftentimes, if you just pick them up uh, and, mm, and hold them, they will calm down. Their heart rate will 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 will, will be lower. Uh, uh, and sometimes uh, uh -huh, they will still cry after you pick him up. But y'all remember the man when the boy had fallen and I think it's St. Mark 9 and he hit his head and it looked like he was dead and looked like he wasn't going to live and the father came. They were out there in the field together and the father said uh, 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 Catherine Giles, he said, take him Lord have mercy to his mother. Y'all ain't wow, helping me yeah. here this morning. Y'all ain't yeah. helping me. He said, take him to his. There's yeah. something there, Minister Arnett, Arnett Dixon. Uh, hallelujah. When you take that baby and you give him to his mother, there is a syncopation. Y'all know what syncopation is. S Y N C O P A T I O A. All of a sudden, the baby's heartbeat uh, gets in tune with mothers. Y'all ain't helping me here. I'm trying. Trying to wrap this thing up, Sister Tanya Scott. Baby's heart be all frantic, all, all colic, been crying and everything. But when mama take that baby and she pulls that baby close to her breath, her baby can now send. I know this for me. I know this heartbeat. I know this arena. I've been connected to her for nine months long. And now I feel comfortable. And I feel like everything's going to be all right. Well, if you've been close to God and you know who God is when things get difficult, yeah. when your life gets dark, yeah. when situations around you get drear, when you get close to God. That's why we come to the altar every Sunday morning. We don't start a worship service no matter how much we want to preach, no matter how much we want to sing, no matter how much we want to shout without saying draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you when the closer you, oh my God. Y'all remember Brother Randall off, I'm closing here. Mm, this is my seven clothes. Uh, Brother Randolph, back in the day uh, when we were trying to shave, being young men as it were, they used to tell us there was a place up here in uh, Cockeysville, not too far from where you live, called the, uh -huh, the Knox, uh, Knoxell Corporation, and they had shaving cream up there. They used to advertise, and they said, the closer you shave, <laughs> the more you need Noxima. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you uh, the closer life gets to you uh, and the more frightful you get uh, and the more troublesome it is, uh, the more you need God. Uh, more things come in your life, uh, the closer you get, draw nigh to God uh, and God will draw nigh to you. Uh, there is something, I got to close by telling you, uh, there is no hope without an expectation of a brighter future. The future and hope are always connected together. You will never talk about hope yes. in a positive sense without also connecting a future. Yes. I want to close here by telling you God has a bright future for you. Yes, he does. Now it's up to me and it's up to you whether we're going to accept it and walk into it. It's not in yesterday. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. No, no. It's in the future. Hope is always connected, write it down. Hope is always connected to my future. Hmm. Hope is always connected to my, to my future. I'm going to get out of this prison. One of these old days, God's going to open up the door. I'm going to get out of here. Hallelujah. But I got to know that there's a bright side somewhere. If in your heart there is no song, just keep the faith and keep holding on. Turn your plate down fast and pray. Jesus will always make a way. There's a bright side.
somewhere. Come on, come on, come on, help me. If in your heart, there is no, what he said, he said, you got to have a song. He said, every time they put me in a hole, that's a word, that's just a euphemism for, for solitary confinement. He said, every time they put me in a hole, I take Mozart with me. I take, and he said, one thing about music, they can never take it from you. Yeah. There is no song, just keep the faith and keep holding on. Turn your plate down. Fast and pray, Jesus will always make a way. Say with me, there, come on, church, a bright side somewhere. Somebody raise your hand and say hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody say there's a bright side. Come on, say it. Come on. There's a bright side. I don't care how dark it is. 25 years they had in that prison, but they kept chipping away. Kept chipping, and one day they got out. They hid it behind the Rita Hayworth poster. That's why Mr. Stephen King names that book, Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Hallelujah, put the blame on Maine. Yeah, put the blame on Maine. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to pray for us right now. I want to pray you and you, and especially you, yes I do, that as we open up the doors of the church to invite you to come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord, as Savior of your life, transfer membership or to reinstitute, whatever the case may be, that you will place hope center. It's that candle, yeah, I'm looking back at the, at the table to see, and yet that light is still burning, that green candle is still yet lit. And so as our officers stand right now with me, and we pray, we bow our heads, you search your heart. Yeah. Don't let, don't let, don't let the, the, the spirit of Samson get in there now. And he thought he was saved. He thought he was going to make it. And then when the Philistines came upon him and she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he shook himself as in times past, but he wished not that the spirit had departed from him. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, wonderful second Sunday of Advent, this Sunday of progress and prosperity, this Sunday of green, this Sunday of hope. Thank you, O Lord, for every heart and every soul. Nine members, nine friends, nine worshipers, Sister Erica Harris has brought to share with us today. I ask, O God, that you reward her richly. And I pray, oh God, that we have brought some, shun, some sunshine into their life today. The cloud has been rolled back for just a moment. Sunshine has come in. And even in advanced age or whatever their situation may be, they've seen hope today. And they know that you still care. We want them to know, oh God, that you still care. But not only them, we want everyone within the sound of our voice, even our Facebook participants, to know that you still care. Does Jesus care? Oh, yes, he cares. And Lord, we are thanking you today. Now, if there's anyone, Pastor Golden, I'm here. I've heard the gospel message this morning. And I want to come and join the New Unity Church. I want to surrender my life to Christ. Or I want to reconnect with this church. Or I want to transfer my membership. But I know that I want this hope that comes from heaven. I want this hope that abounds from heart to heart and breast to breast. And what I've seen and witnessed and heard today, I want to be a part of this church. And if you're here, all you have to do is wave your hand or unmute your mic or make yourself known some kind of way. And, and Brother Kearney and Minister and, and uh, Deacon Hoover are scouring the monitors now. If there's anyone out there that says we are here, you hit that little wave hand button or unmute your mic or wave your hand physically if you're on video. And we'll take the moment to acknowledge you and to receive you today. Amen. Is there one? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor I Brother Chose. All right. All right. All right there, Brother brother Kearney. Uh, brother Charles Lewis, are you there? Yes, sir. Are you at work today, I believe? 
Yes, sir. All right. Are you, are you coming today? Are you coming to uh, back to the New Unity Baptist Church today? Yes, sir. I'm coming home. Of your, of your own free will? Yes, sir. Your own free volition? Yes, sir. No duress? No, sir. No coercion? No, sir. But a free heart? Yes, sir. And a free mind? Yes, sir. You, 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 you need some hope? Yes, sir. All right, here it is. You come to the right. Come on, New Unity. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, New Unity. Come on, clap your hand. Come on, New Unity. Come on, church. Come on, come on. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Look, just look what the Lord has done. Y'all know I got 10,000 songs in me. Whoa, look what the Lord has done. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Brother Charles Lewis, we are so glad to see you on camera even greater to receive you. And what better time to come than in this Advent Sunday on hope. There's probably not too many families, Brother Charles Lewis, and on a family basis uh, than the Mosby family, Catherine Mosby. You know her? Yes, sir. Who is that? My mom. I know that's your mother. And too many people other than the Mosby family go back 50, 60 years plus, plus, with the New Unity Baptist Church. I don't mean 20 years, which is a good, good record. 30, 40, 50, but I'm talking about more than a half century than your mother and, and, uh, and her great legacy and all her children. We are delighted. And all the days, Brother Charles, the Sister Elaine Taylor done pumped into you. Yeah. Amen. All the days, Deacon Marion I done had to uh, shine yeah. your head with Vaseline. My <laughs> God, and get you to church on time. Hallelujah. You know. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come on, boy. All them days that Brother Eddie and Sister Bunny done brought you to church. Welcome back mm -hmm. home, Brother Charles. That's what it says there. Thank you. Welcome back home, Brother Charles. We are delighted, Brother Charles, to receive you here today. And you're going to hear from the church in an official way, in an official way. And we're delighted. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand. To you. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand. Amen. First lady saw you on the screen earlier. She said, Brother Charles on the screen. Brother Charles said, where? She said, third, second row, third block. I said, all right, all right. It moves, you know, during the course of the worship. Now you're on the top block. But anyway, God be praised. Amen. Anybody else? Man, this is the day to jump on in the water. Amen. This is the day to jump in the water, isn't it? Well, God be praised. Amen. Amen. Well, my heart's been filled today. My soul's been delivered. I've done, I hope, what the Lord has told me. I hope <laughs> that was not intended to be a point on play on word. But I hope, amen, since it's Hope Sunday, I hope I've done what the Lord has called me to do. And we're going to ask you, Chair Hoover, to say a word to the church. And we'll come with the benediction and any final announcements, and we'll be on our way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a word, new unity. Amen. Our hearts have been lifted today. Amen. And we are renewed all the more. We're grateful to the Lord for you, Brother Charles, who came back home today. We left the light on, brother. We knew you'd be here. We're glad to see you, Brother Charles. God bless you. In New Unity, we're grateful as we continue to invite our family and our loved ones to join us throughout this Advent season that God's going to bring many more back home to as well. Amen. Amen. We believe it by faith, don't we? We believe it by faith. Amen. And so we do want to remind you, New Unity, of our Christmas party. Yes, Hashtag right. best Christmas party ever. Right. It's going to be on Saturday, December the 11th from 1 to 4 at 5114 Liberty Heights Avenue. Tickets, final tickets will be sold today. If you call after 305, you missed it. Tickets will be sold today up until three o'clock as they are available. So please, please, please reach out to our minister Zen Smith uh, immediately after service today that you might secure as well as that you might settle up any tickets that you might have outstanding, amen. We also remind you on Wednesday, we'll be back at 12 noon for our rebroadcast and we'll be here on Wednesday night. Our pastor's giving us a, a series, New Unity, a series on first fruits, amen. 
We're grateful to the Lord that the goal has been set for our first fruits 2022. God set it for us. Amen. And so we'll walk therein. And so we're re receiving training, renewing our minds and our hearts during this time. So grateful to the Lord. Once again, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., first fruits Bible study emphasis and training. Amen. And then on Saturday morning, we'll be here at bright and early at 7 a.m. for our prayer meeting. It's a one hour prayer service, and we'll be here then. And then once again, as we close out for our Christmas party from one to four, thanking to the Lord for each of you and how he's continued to bless us. Special shout outs to our very own sister, Erica Harris. Amen. Apple don't fall far from the tree, does it? Right. Sister right. Erica done brought nine people to church today. Good God almighty. And so sister Erica, to all the residents there at Forest Haven, our heart is dear. I love Forest Haven. Philip and I, we got married there. And so that has a special place in our hearts. And so thank you, Sister Erica, for tuning in. And we also want to encourage you, New Unity, in these closing moments. Just as Sister Erica thought outside the box and said, I'm at work, but the Lord creates these opportunities that I can share with my church family just as she did, used her Zoom connection right there at work, and were able to allow all these residents to join in our worship today, let the Lord move on your heart and let him encourage you that you'll be able to share the love of Jesus this self-same way. Amen. Pastor Golden, we're ready to go. Amen. Amen. You know, Sister Miller, I had forgotten you're absolutely right that you and Philip got married there. Of course, you would know that. I had forgotten about that. You certainly were. And I was a preacher of the uh, amen of, the, of that hour, of that day. Absolutely. I thank you for reminding me. Absolutely. And what a great day it was. It was a grand day. And here it is, Sister Erica is there at the first Forest uh, Haven Nursing Home. And, and there she is with nine residents. Sister Erica, I think you must have... Uh, you see this right here? I think you must have peeped my notes, Sister Erica. I really think. Because that line here, I said, hope is a social gift. Our connectedness with each other is one of the single best predictors of hope. Hope does not happen in isolation, but it happens in relationship with each other, something bigger, something greater than ourselves. I think you peeped my notes. I think you must have spread my notes this week. Hey, Amen. It is not, it's not in isolation. You went out and brought people made this message live. It doesn't happen in isolation. Amen. Thank you also very, very, very much. Have a great day, great week. Enjoy yourself. Amen. We send our blessing um, again oh, to our New Shallow Church, New Shallow Baptist Church, in the passing of one of our dear, dear members and friend, Sister Betty Coleman. Uh, Miss Coleman, uh, she and her husband, George Coleman, um, they were just stellar. They've been a part of that church, Brother Charles Lewis. His father was uh, chair of the trustee board way back when. And then he and he came in succeeding. He, he uh, succeeded his father. Um, and now he passed maybe two, three years ago. And now she has passed as of last night. So we send our prayer to the New Shiloh, Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, and we ask God's grace upon them. We also remember Sister Brenda Lucas. We had an opportunity to visit with her family. You all know her well. Sister uh, Lucas uh, was Deacon Porter, our mother's, uh, one of her dear friends. And, and uh, Brenda Lucas has passed on. We had an opportunity to share with her. And Sister uh, Brother, Brother Dixon Sr., you tell, you tell your baby, Elisa, we got a young uh, girl who's, who, 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 who matched her. Uh, Shalon is one of uh, Sister Brenda Lucas's daughters, and Shalon uh, has 11 boys and not 11, but 11. 11 boys and one girl. She got 12. She got her a whole tribe of girls, a whole tribe of boys and one girl. And Shalon was there, Monet and Tasha and all the rest as we celebrated their mother and we, we send uh, the love of Christ their way as well. Amen. Everyone have a great week. Don't forget the announcements. We'll see you throughout this week. Amen. Let us pray. Let's bow. I'm going to ask First Lady, if you don't mind, to come and offer uh, the closing prayer this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Father God, we thank you for this gathering, this season of worship, Father. 
that you bless this congregation, oh God. We thank you, God, for a return of one of your children, Brother Charles Lewis. Yeah. We honor you today for what you've done in our midst. And we say thank you. Cover every vessel and home with your precious blood. This prayer we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Love you all. God bless you. Praise him.